Hello YouTube, Bill Hensley here, and it's uh, Friday, it's 6 o'clock in the morning right now, and we're actually getting ready to go to work, but we have planned a weekend getaway for this weekend, and we are going to take the Bolt EV down to Massachusetts, just south of Boston. Uh, it's about a 225 mile drive, so we should be able to do that easily. Um, right now, the car is actually at a 50% charge. So our plan is we are going to ride into work together using the uh, Nissan Leaf and I'm going to move my wife's car into the garage and set it for departure mode of 4 o'clock because that's what time we get out of work. And we'll have a full charge so we can make the uh, road trip down to Massachusetts. So here I am in the garage, and before I uh, plug in, I want to make sure that my settings are set accordingly. So I'm going to go to my energy menu, and I'm going to go over to where it says energy settings. And we usually keep it on Hilltop Reserve, which will charge the car up to like an 80 or 90%. But I want to take that off, so that way it goes to 100% this time. And because I'm going to be plugging in right now, and it's only 626 in the morning... With a 50% charge, this will be done before noon. I mean, it'll be done sometime around 10 or 11. So I want to go to my charging settings. And right here where it says departure, 7 a.m. Friday, I actually want to switch that over, not at 7 a.m., but I want to edit that to 4 p.m. So now I will uh, back out. It says departure is 4 p.m. Friday. It is 627 right now in the morning. And I have Hilltop Reserve mode turned off, so it will charge to 100% by 4 p.m. And that's exactly what we want. So we'll have 100% charge when we leave this afternoon to go to Massachusetts. So now all I have to do here is unplug my EVSE here on the wall and plug it into the bolt over here. And you'll notice that when I do plug this in, the light on the dash will illuminate and it'll pulsate but at a much slower pace than normal. And that's an indication that I have the um, departure time set. And you can also take a peek here on the dash as well. And that's another indication because it actually it shows you right here on the dash. Yes, uh, charge complete by 4 p.m. I can also look on my phone here too. And after doing a quick refresh, which I just did, it will show that it's going to finish up at 4 p.m. All right, so here we are. We're in my Nissan Leaf. We're headed off to work right now. And uh, as much as I would love to take this car on our adventure this afternoon, it's just going to be so much easier to take my wife's car because we have to go 200 plus miles to get to our destination this afternoon. And by taking her car, we'll only have to stop once to charge versus twice if we were to take my Leaf. So while I was at work, I received a notification around 11.30 in the morning from my Juicebox Pro 40 that the car had just started to charge. I was then able to log into the app and check on its status, and sure enough, the Bolt EV was charging at its highest rate off of our Level 2 EVSE at home. Everything shown here on the status page confirmed that not only was the car charging, but it had just initiated the charge and that everything was going according to plan. I then got out of my Juicebox Pro 40 app so that I could hop over to the My Chevrolet app and verify its status over there. After a quick refresh in the My Chevrolet app, I could see that the charge status was indeed now set to charging and that the estimated charge complete time was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. About an hour and a half later in the day, I decided to check in on it again through the My Chevrolet app and I could see that everything was still on track to be complete at 4 o'clock in the afternoon when we both got home from work. When we did get home from work, I pulled the car out of the garage, and we proceeded to pack the last of our stuff in the back. On a full charge, the car was showing an estimated range of 227 miles on the minimum, which was the number I was more focused on because I knew we would be using more energy due to mostly interstate driving. So I just thought we'd get a quick shot of this. We are the uh, only ones trying to get out of the state of Maine, while everyone else is trying to get into the state of Maine. And they're going at a snail's pace over there. Actually, it's not too bad right here, but a moment ago it was like all blocked up. 
I, I estimate they're going what, like 25, no, 35 miles an hour right there. Not as fast as they'd like to be going. Yeah. <laughs> so all, all these people trying to enter the state because it's a Friday, and we're we're just getting out of the state. You know, we're going for a weekend getaway. <laughs> And if, in fact, if you want to look at the average here, and we're, we're in a slower area right now, it's uh, it's only uh, 60 miles an hour, or 65, I guess I can go a little faster. <laughs> but uh, our average right now, we're doing a, uh, what, 204, so, and we've only got another 119 miles to go, so we're right on, we're, we're doing good. <laughs> and now it picks up, so now we can lock it back into 70 miles an hour. We're, we're doing the consistent speeds you know we're not going slower than everyone else we're pretty much keeping up with traffic there are a few fast people out here like this guy right here um, but yeah we're, we're we're keeping up with traffic so we're doing good and I've got it uh, at 65 right now I just have someone in front of me actually that's going slow so <laughs> where are we going then we're gonna go see Thomas yeah yeah are you excited to go see Thomas mm -hmm. yeah Hi. We're gonna go that way to go see Thomas. We're gonna go see dinosaurs. Oh. All right. So I just wanted to show that yes, we are. We are locked in at 73 miles an hour here. I am in the middle lane. It is 70 miles an hour. So I've got it, you know, three miles above. I'm not gonna go much faster than that, but yet we have people that. Right now it's nice and clear, but a moment ago I had like people zooming past me at like 80 over there, and then this lane to the far right, they were all going like 60 miles an hour or something because it felt like we were passing every single person. So, so we're familiar with this. We've done this before. Uh, when we cross over the bridge up here, we will be entering New Hampshire. And the GPS will welcome us to New Hampshire, and we got a kick out of it last time when we went on our trip to Virginia. <laughs> what is that, Ben? The bridge? Wow. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here it goes. Right in the center of the bridge. <laughs> It's Massachusetts we didn't catch last time, so I want to make sure we can grab that. There we go. Welcome to New Hampshire. Welcome to New Hampshire. <laughs> I still get a kick out of that. The, the, the GPS welcomes you to the next state. <laughs> Do you like the bridge, Ben? What? What's over there? Do you see the buildings over there? Yeah. In two miles, use the right two lanes to take exit 59 or I-495 South toward Worcester. Welcome to Massachusetts. There we go, we got the Welcome to Massachusetts sign this time. Woohoo! <laughs> there we go, we're almost there to our first stop. We're going to be going to the Solomon Pond Mall. And we are... Take exit 25B, then Here. use the right lane to merge onto Solomon <laughs> Pond Mall Road. We have driven just about 160 miles so far, and we could do still do 71. 61 uh, is our. Use the right lane to merge onto Solomon Pond Mall Road. Then use the right two lanes to turn right onto Donald Lynch Boulevard. There we go. <laughs> We're gonna pull over. We're gonna get a bite to eat. And then we'll continue on the rest of the way to our hotel, which is, I think, 60 miles from here. So we could have done it all in one shot, but, you know, it's time to stretch and it's time to uh, relax. <laughs> Use the right two lanes to turn right onto Donald Lynch Boulevard. We are here. We made it to the Solomon Pond Mall. And it was an open... It was open, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> That's Yay. awesome. Here we go. 159.6 miles, so 160 miles we drove. Uh, 3.8 is our efficiency. We could have gone another 76 miles, but realistically, probably 65. The min would be 51. And we are like 59 miles away from our hotel, so it just makes sense to get out of the car, plug in, and even if we don't charge up to 100%, if we can get to the halfway point, feel more than comfortable to make the next 58 or 9 miles to get to the hotel. So. 
Yeah, and we're hungry. It's, it's time for dinner. I mean, we usually eat around 6, 6.30. It's 7.15. It's time to eat. So, all right, we're here. And there we go. We are now plugged into the DC fast charger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, Frisbee in the window, which tells people when I'm going to be back. I'd like to give a special shout out and thanks to Sal, creator of evfrisbee.com and evguidelines.org, which I'll include in the description below. Sal is a patron of mine and has earned the title of EV Ambassador, and his websites are loaded with useful information for proper EV etiquette while charging out in public. Thank you, Sal, for all that you do for the electric car community and for your support to this channel. It is much appreciated, and I hope that I can continue to earn your patronage with any future videos that I may put out. While stopping for a bite to eat at the food court in the mall, I was able to check in on the charge status through the EVgo app on my phone. Like before, while I was checking in on the car from work, I was also able to use the My Chevrolet app to see the exact percentage of the charge level in the car. Not too much time had passed, and we had more than enough charge to make it to our destination. There we go. We're all set. It's, uh, what time is it? Oh, the time's over here. I'm looking like it's in the leaf. So it's only 7.51. We weren't even here for just over a half an hour. And we've got, we were at like a quarter of a charge and now we're just under three quarters of a charge with a minimum of 134 miles that we can do. And we only need to go like 58, 59, 60 miles. So I'm all unplugged now. I put everything back to the way it was and took the Frisbee out of the window. We're good to go. <laughs> and we're full now. And we're full. Are you full, Ben? Yeah, he's, no. he's ready for, for uh, to go to bed. <laughs> There we go. We we've made it to Edaville Railroad. <laughs> ben, who are we gonna go see? What? Who are we gonna go see? Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> and He's excited. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost like the dragon's descent. Oh, hey, that, was so hard. <laughs> that wasn't nice to me, but Dino Land, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ben, do you see dinosaurs? See another one? Oh, Ben, look, he's moving. Where's, where was the button at? Oh, look. My name is Dr. Henry Douglas. The dinosaur's moving. Paleontologist here in Dino Land. It lived about 76 million years ago. Do you see that orange grill on its head? It was most likely used to attract the meat. Look, look. Is it flying? This is a petrodon. It lived about 76 million years ago and is sometimes referred to as winged and toothless. Why? Well, it has wings and no teeth, of course. Is that a big one? Is that a big one? That's an Allosaurus. Oh, look. Look at him, Ben. Guy. Um, this is a Tyrannosaurus. Uh, this T Rex may seem large to us. Look at this. He is really just two years old. A two year old T Rex. This little guy in front of you to be feet long. Come over here, Ben. I say estimate because I have a 15 feet. Is he looking at you? Tyrannosaurus are carnivores. Roar at him. Go roar. Growing dino may want a Henry Douglas sandwich if I'm not careful. At approximately 14 years old, he'll be about 22 feet long and 4,000 pounds. <laughs> then he will hit his growth spurt. He's looking for you, Ben. By about 18 years old. Growled at you, Ben, and he moved his head. See, look. You just found a life size. Adult T Rex. <laughs> yeah. You gonna roar back at him? You gonna roar at him, Ben? Ben, stay right there, please. Oh, <laughs> 
So here we are, we're in Kennebuckport, Maine at the uh, rest stop area and they have just put in these Tesla supercharging stations, which is awesome. There's nothing for us right now, but they have plans on expanding in the future. And in fact, we don't actually need a charge. We're doing pretty good right now. If I go into the vehicle, you can see that we are, let's see here. We have driven 408 miles on this trip and we can do another 125 miles at our absolute worst. We could do 102. And we're only 59 miles away from home. So we'll be able to get home, plug in, recharge. And you know, we, we've had a really good trip here. Have you had a good trip, Ben? Daddy's talking to you. Ben, have you had a good trip? <laughs> he nodded his head. Yeah, and we, and we need to use the bathroom. That's the only reason why we stopped here. So, <laughs> so yeah, let me uh, go ahead and power this down. But yeah, in the future, they're gonna expand and they're gonna put some uh, other charging stations in for everybody else. So there'll be uh, these eight Teslas here. And then they'll have uh, some others. <laughs> 